uh, I've noticed some entities that if you live with them a certain amount of time, you'll notice that leaving trash around is like a form of marking territory and also creating, yeah, marking territory to the vibrational frequency or idea in your mind that you are there, you're, um, you're creating a comfort zone. Um, it, it's a comforting feeling, you know. That's what I figure. Well, how else can I just unconsciously leave trash around? You know, when I um, drinking containers and stuff like that. They they just set it down and they walk away. And it's like, well, I have recycling um, bins and we were doing recycling. But anyway, um, my point being is that there are other forms of of living in such a way that doesn't it's not necessarily just literal trash you know wrappers and see what i'm saying is very real because you, you can notice the hoarder narcissist i talked about it once they tend to um, there's different styles see some of them will collect just trash interlaced is things some are just thing oriented like antiques and certain things and no matter the whatever the case of the quality of the thing whether it's trash they're creating a comfort zone first of all and then there's a very scientific mechanical psychological reason for that that i already explained once but um yeah it's creating an environment that they feel safe in uh, because well first of all that's their creation they, that's their comfort zone um and it's always looking the same that you pretty soon you can't recognize whether it's a bathroom or a kitchen there's just a pathway and deal with that but see now getting back to yeah how grotesque it may get if it's trash aligned in with it which oftentimes it is some of some of it is just pure trash right because a lot of people don't have the narcissist doesn't have any taste to say well this is an amazing hobby to collect something and to the point of uh storage units and then but the but really it's that pathway feel and they're they're really cuddling up with this stuff because they are identifying with that more um, than just having an inner inner um center that goes with them wherever they go um they cannot even um, go anywhere with themselves right there's something going on well of course they they're doing money but anyway um point to this conversation it could come in the form also i mean if you can imagine it's not just an obvious this person um surrounds themselves in this noisy environment and they feel safe there they feel comfortable there talking about my neighbor here see he chooses to chop um wood um and i, I i'm pretty sure it's kindling you know, he, he has some logs that he's chopping. He's just going to systematically get some kindling going. And, and, and um, see, it's at six in the morning, you know. And see, I am somebody who, um, I this community has died that lives in Idaho that used to be a sanctuary worth being proud to live in. The very quality of it was controlled by the people that's really the fact of quality control is that you there isn't anybody else doing it but you and so his noise and perhaps what the comfort zone of other people say he has a closer neighbor over there he's done this for a while by the way i, I just let it slide i'm like god this guy he, he's really he's just unorganized you know you can easily chop that much wood in the middle of the day he can get home from work and do it or just right before bed that's what I do. I do. I, there's a just certain, right before sunset is when I chop my wood. If I'm an idiot, I do it in the morning, every morning. It's part of my routine when I, maybe breakfast is simmering and, and then I'm chopping wood. It takes no time at all to get what you need in the morning to, to quietly light a fire, but see what he's doing. I'm sorry, I'm talking about my neighbor, but let's just get to the general. I'll generalize. Um, that that the noise that he's creating and say that the see these neighbors can care less and even I see I'm saying well 
I turn it into a music in my head. I'm thinking, well, there's, there's, I'm turning it into a comfort zone. Basically, their noise, but really it's human noise. And when I say noise, babes, unorganized, unorganized, and also inconsiderate. If we speak of the community that used to, to manage a curfew, that they would never make any kind of noise that anybody could hear echoing through the forest, not until nine o'clock in the morning, or we and we stop at seven in the evening. This was established when, because this is a forest where saws and what wood chopping and machinery could be going almost 24 seven and it was during the turn of the century and then the people throughout the 30s and 40s, they were continuing to mill wood around here. And it was always like that. And they love where they live and they love the lifestyle. I mean, in the turn of the century, it was just mainly camping out with horse and, horse and wagons. There was wagons all around here. And we had one left over here in our yard for a long time. I turned it into a spaceship. There's pictures of me sitting on that wagon. And I decorated it with modern day things to turn it into a spaceship. Um as a kid, you know, uh, I loved playing on that thing. And uh, you can just imagine, you know, we live on Tollgate here. People don't know that that was the main road in and out. Tollgate was what passed the, the logging horses in and out. And there's a, a road a along the grotto. And then it kind of goes a different way than what's now a highway doing zippity zoozy zaza zay. Um, just because it's it's now a spectacle for the tourists uh, of, of Earth, amusement park Earth owned by a sweltering, um, ever, ever present, um, system, let's just say. I was trying to generalize, um, something for us, and you can learn how to generalize something, too. I am a general. Intergalactic. A6369. O-C-E-C-T. Um, Ram 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 um, basically means uh, it's a it's a um, that's my intergalactic name anyway back to the organization now the, the so-called community that lives up here is not at all oriented to the the reality of their environment like they, they can care less about the, the silence that is maintained by the wilderness. If you let the wilderness be the wilderness, it's just one of the most, it's a sanctuary. See, and then what, so let alone what he does, I mean, see, this is the, the thing, babes. I didn't imagine this. I did not imagine this. See, I'm very aware, um, and I'm a homebody. I stay here. I'm a shrine here in Idlewild. I am a fucking energetic shrine, whether people know it, like it or not. There's probably other people like that up here still that are like me who, when I say like me, they not only come from uh, 35 years of having lived here and they know about that curfew thing. They come from the fucking community. They know the community and they, they were rubbing elbows and proud to live in the sanctuary that the reason why it's a sanctuary is so pristine and amazingly beautiful includes the wilderness and how there's no fencing and stuff like this Pfft, goes out the window. Um, it's because the people that live there keep it that way. They know where they are. They are conscientious. This guy, this is what I saw yesterday. He gets home from work in his big diesel truck. I know he's home. Okay, so then I, I notice he, he's walking around, around outside. I look at him. I just glanced over. God showed me this. He's walking... He's kind of engaging with his entity, his fucking asphalt that he laid, in fact, 12 truckloads. I wish I was exaggerating right there. I have a film of it. Six of the first round and then six the other. 12 truckloads city-sized of, of fucking shitty asphalt. Pardon me. Just need, need to get over this emotion so I can start typing letters and saying this is what I'm dealing with. And I'm dealing with these officials that are playing the part of we can't see and or even hear you. It's a gaslight. And I'm like, oh, I understand you just need me to keep prodding and telling my story. And I will also tell the story how you guys suck because you're the only avenue with which the public has to go to keep these fucking people in line. About what? Well, let's just consider where we live. Can we start reestablishing something? like Anyway, yeah, reestablishing. 
these people find it comforting. You know, they can find it. The, the city people, they, they, they find all that. They can find all of that, which can amount into a roaring amount of just pure fucking noise. I'm sorry, but I am a musician and I am insane enough to convert it into music. I have been meditating next to um, rushing waterfalls for 25 years on end to the point of where when I sit next to a freeway, unlike you people, maybe, I can close my eyes and just say, oh, that's the rushing waterfalls. Beautiful. God. The main thing is I get that peace. I mean, I imagine if it's a, if it's a fucking arena where I'm uh, sitting at an airport and there's jets going by, it's like, that's a beautiful thunderstorm that I'm sitting through. Whew. Just having absorbed the mountains is enough. They're, they're never going to leave me wherever I go. And uh, aside from that, my ability to translate sound, any noise, into music is very real for me. A lot of people don't. Well, I wish I could plug them into that reality. That, that you know, I've already experienced six chainsaws going, and like four tree grinders happening at the same time. Um, see, I just kind of I have no choice, but my my brain starts listening to intervals mathematically, and it's and it turns into a fucking orchestra. Uh, orchestra, and I'm like, whether this is reptilian or untuned or not, I can't believe how beautiful this sounds. <laughs> And, well, other musicians I've heard who have been playing long enough, they, they have explained to me, I know, I feel so funny when I'm bl blow-drying my hair and I'm I'm singing to the blow-dryer because that thing has all kinds of tones. Babes, the entire universe doesn't. Why aren't we doing this? Why isn't it happening that we can find harmony and just start grooving? Um, and I'm not, I didn't just say, would you ignore the tree grinder and the, and the sawing shit over there? It's green trees they're taking down, man. Just wait. Just enjoy the music until all the trees are gone and wonder, well, what? what? How do we play music anymore? I didn't just say that. <laughs>